All right, guys, how's it hanging? Carter here. Well, we're going to be talking about detent balls. I just shot my video about fixing uh, my super ridiculously strong detent in this epicenter here. Um, very nice knife, by the way. I really like it. Done very well, except for the detent, which was way too strong. Here's something cool. You can loosen this pivot a whole bunch. No blade play, because everything fits together so well that uh, it doesn't really affect it whatsoever. Anyway, so we're going to talk a little bit about detents, how they work, and uh, the different ways they're implemented, and how it results in a strong detent, weak detent, um, flipper detent, you know, stuff ideal for a flipper and things like that. So basically, a detent is you have, see this hole right here? It's not always a hole that goes all the way through. Sometimes it's just a pocket. does the same thing creates a hole on the inside of this lock bar. There is a ball bearing pressed into it. Sometimes it's steel, sometimes it's ceramic. Uh, varying sizes, usually it's, I'm not sure what the size is, but usually it's fairly constant, but some makers use larger ones and so on. And then in the blade, you have a hole drilled that in the closed position, the ball fits into the hole and then rides along the blade and allows it to kind of suck in like so. Uh, the ball detent does two things. It falls into that hole and helps keep it closed and it also gives it something small to ride on when you're opening the blade. So even on Emerson's that don't have a working detent in terms of keeping it closed on this side, it still has a ball in order for it to smoothly ride open. Because uh, you can see right here, so that's where the detent ball has fallen off of the tang inside here. And right here you've got, you can hear that kind of crunchiness. That is just flat titanium rubbing on the blade. Here it's nice and smooth, falls off, and then it's crunchy. Now that's the basics of the detent ball. Now what determines how strong that detent is. Well, part of it's uh, strength of the log bar, but more so than that is the actual sizes. So if you have a detent ball, so what is pressed inside of this lock bar right here, and then you've got your hole. Now to make a really, really strong detent, you would actually make your hole the exact same size and position it so the entire ball fits inside the entire hole. That's going to give you a really strong detent, which was the case here. It was a really big detent hole, so the entire ball fell inside that hole. To make it weaker, uh, you have your detent ball, you'd have a smaller detent hole so that not all of the ball, so let's say you're looking at the cross section of the ball here, so only maybe this much of the ball actually goes inside the hole. So your ball diameter is this big, your hole diameter is this big, not the entire ball falls inside the hole. Another way to do it is if you have a ball for a weaker detent or a lighter detent, is if you have the same size hole as the ball, so the same scenario here, but with the way it's positioned, the ball doesn't completely go inside the hole, if that makes sense. So the actual travel, it doesn't completely sink in, only some of it does. So if you were to look at the profile version, let's say that's our hole, your ball would be something like this. So it wouldn't fit completely inside of the hole right there. Now, in terms of flippers, what you would usually want to do um, is whether you implement any of these, usually you want kind of a stronger detent, but you want to put a flat onto the ball like that. So if this is the side profile of the ball, you'd want to flatten the tip right here because what that'll do is you'll get a lot of tension as you're trying to pull this ball out of the hole until you hit this flat and then all of a sudden, boom, it's gone and it'll fly open. So you build up a lot of tension with a strong detent here and then you hit this point and it clears that hole like that and your blade flies open. Um, if you don't do that and you just do a completely round hole right here, it's not going to flip as well. You're not going to get that burst that you would get as soon as it clears right here. It's just going to kind of, I mean, it still may fly open depending on how smooth it is and how strong the detent is and how the flipper is designed. But ideally, you'd want it flattened on the end here to give you that extra pop as soon as it hits right there. Uh, with a manual knife, 
it doesn't really do much with that. It, it would kind of actually make it a little bit jerky and it may feel a little bit weird because you'd go to open it, it'd be hard, then all of a sudden pop, it would pop open. Uh, but you can do it on manual knives too. But generally, when doing a flipper, that's usually how you want to do it. And that's how a well-designed flipper would be done as far as the detent goes. All right, guys, so that's it. Just a quick overview of detents, kind of how they work. Um, you can see how, you know, if you're trying to rectify a detent problem, there's various scenarios that can be causing the issue if it's too strong or too light, and it may or may not be fixable. Um, so you got to keep all that in mind and actually really look at your knife and try to determine how it's done. One way to do that is, you know, a lot of it's guesstimation, but you can watch this lock bar, and as you close it, see how far in it goes, you know, and try and determine how much of that is going inside there. Take a look at the track, take a look at how big the ball is, how big the hole is, um, and even then it's still guesswork unless you really know what you're doing, which I don't. So in the case of fixing this, it worked out well, but it, it could have not. So keep that in mind. All right, guys, that's it. Take it easy. Have a good day.